Hi everyone, welcome back again to the channel and to another video. Today we are going to look at Arch Linux maintenance. So we are going to explore a little bit the Arch Wiki about the system maintenance and learn also some tips and tricks about Pac-Man. So I perform very often these system maintenance tasks to keep my system lean and up to date. This way I've never had until now a crash, never had any problem. And this is very important in Arch Linux to keep the system clean and up to date in order to run smoothly. So let's jump into the video and see how we can do it. So what I'm going to show you in this video are the tasks I actually perform on my machine. And as a reference, I used, of course, the Arch Linux Wiki. So we have a page on the Arch Wiki, which is going to tell us everything about system maintenance. Now let me pull the website over. And I will leave, of course, a link to this in the video description below. But what you can basically see here is the system maintenance for Arch Linux, and it's going through many different steps. Now, it doesn't mean that you have to do all of them. The most important thing is to read through the wiki and find out actually which tasks are more appropriate for you. So I read actually through the whole thing here and I decided to implement some of these steps plus also some of my steps that I do personally on my machine which are not listed here. So I'm just going to show you what I do and then definitely look through the Arch Wiki for system maintenance and also the Arch Wiki for Pac-Man tips and tricks and I will leave also a link to it of course in the video description below. So let me close this window here and let's go back here to the terminal. Now, the first thing, if your machine is not behaving the way it's supposed to, or you think that there might be a problem, it's important to check for failed systemd services. This can happen, for example, if your Bluetooth adapter is not working or your printing system is not working or something else. Check for systemd failed services to see what's wrong in the machine, and then you can troubleshoot from there. Now, the command to do that is for the user systemctl and then dash dash failed as the fish shell is suggesting me here. And then I can hit enter. And as you can see, it says zero loaded units listed. So in my case right now, I don't have any systemd service which has failed. And as I said, you can check this just to make sure when your machine is not behaving the way it's supposed to, to check this from time to time to see if there are some errors in here. The second thing is to look through the log files. So if your machine is not behaving correctly, you can also check the log files with the journal CTL command. For this, we need to be a root user. So we need to type in sudo and then journal CTL and then dash P and then three dash XP. And then we can hit enter. We need to enter the sudo password and hit enter. And you can see this is the log file in my machine. Now, there are several things that we can look in here. For example, this is a kernel message. It says here, common interrupt, no IRQ handle for vector. This actually happened a few days ago when I updated the BIOS of my motherboard. Since then, I have this error here and I know this is fine. It's going to be eventually corrected with a new patch probably soon. And then I can scroll through the other messages and see if there is something that I need to pay attention to. So the journal CTI command will help us troubleshoot this. So let me hit Q to get out of this and clean up the terminal. It's probably not needed to say, but I will say it anyway. It's a very important step is to update the system regularly. So I actually update my system once every one or two days. And as you probably already know, to do this, we can type in sudo pacman syu to check for updates. And right now there is nothing to do. So it's fine in my case because I just updated this morning. But again, as I said before, it's very important to keep the system up to date. Arch Linux is a rolling release. Update often, it's a very important step. Now, if you have also Yay installed in your system, Yay, for those of you who don't know, is the helper for the AUR, the Arch User Repository. You can use also Yay to update the packages from the main repositories and also the AUR, whereas Pacman will update the packages only from the main repositories. So to use yay to do that, we can type in yay-syu, the same way we use Pacman, but without the sudo. It will ask you for the password anyway, if you didn't run a command with sudo before. So when I hit enter here, you will see it's checking also packages from the AUR. Now, there is nothing to do in my case, so that's fine, and we can clean up the terminal. Now, another very important maintenance task is to check the Pacman cache. So the Pacman cache is the cache where packages are stored, whether they are installed or not installed. 
Sometimes you download a lot of packages and then after you don't need them anymore, you remove them, but the cache is still filled with that package. So with time, it's gonna build up in space. And if you don't have a big drive, you might notice that your space is gonna run out pretty quickly. So we have two things we can do here. One is to delete the cached packages that are not currently installed in the system. So to do this, we can use the pacman command again as a root user and we can type in sudo pacman dash sc. So this command basically delete all cached packages that are currently not installed in the system. So when I hit enter here, I am asked, do you want to remove all other packages from the cache? I will say yes for now. And do you want to remove unused repositories? Actually, I don't have any, but I'll hit the default here to accept, and this is done. Now, this is the same thing also for the AUR. We can use yay for this. So if we type in yay-sc and hit enter, we are basically going to see the same thing. Do you want to remove all other packages from the cache? And we can say yes again. Again, the same question. Do you want to remove unused repository? Yes. And now we have something new. Do you want to remove all other AUR packages from the cache? I will say in my case, yes. And do you want to remove all untracked AUR files? And I will say yes again. So as you can see, I had a couple of files here and now I remove them also from the cache. So you can use these two commands, pacman and yay, pacman-sc, will delete all cached packages not installed in the system and yay-sc will do the same also by checking the files from the AUR. Now let's clean up the terminal because there is another command that we can use and that is a more aggressive approach which is also described in the ArchWiki and it's to use this scc command. So let's type in sudo pacman-scc. So this option basically deletes all packages in the cache, whether they are installed or not installed in the system. So it's a more aggressive approach, as it's stated also in the ArchWiki, because it removes basically everything in the cache. Now, if you have a small drive, you might consider this. If you have a big drive, it's really up to you. I normally don't use SCC because I have a drive which is fairly big. So I use dash SC. Now, the same thing goes also for yay. We can use also yay dash scc and you know what it means. It's gonna basically clean up the cached packages installed and not installed in the system and also from the AUR. So we can delete this command here and go to the next step, which has to do again with a yay command. So if you have yay installed, you can use one command to clean up all unwanted dependencies. And the command is yay dash yc. And then we can hit enter. And right now it didn't find anything in the system, but if there is an unwanted dependency in your system, this is gonna basically clean it up. So it's a command that I run actually almost every 10 days just to make sure that there are no unwanted dependencies. The next step would be also to check in for orphan packages. Orphan packages means unused packages. So we can do this two ways. First, we can check whether there are orphans in our system. And to do this, we can run as a normal user, pacman-qtdq, and then we can hit enter. So right now I have nothing in my system, but if you see a list of packages there, that means those packages are orphans. Now to remove these packages, we can type in as a root user, sudo pacman-rns, and then we can use basically the command before because it's listing the programs we want to delete. So we can use the dollar sign, the opening parenthesis, and then pacman-qdtq and close the parenthesis. When you hit enter, you're basically removing your orphans packages. Now you can see this is the fish shell and the dollar sign is not recognized in here. So if I want to run this command, I have to go to bash, but I can do another way. Let me delete this command here. And instead of using this command in fish, I can switch first to the root user by typing su and enter my sudo password, go to my home directory. And now I can type in pacman-qdtq and I can type this command into pacman-rns. And now I can hit enter. And you can see no targets specified because I have no orphans in my system. This command, by the way, works also if you are in bash. Just if you are on a fish shell, you'll need to do this because the dollar sign that I showed you before, it's not working in the fish shell. So let me exit here and clean up the terminal.
Now let's move on and check for cleaning some of the directories which might take up space in the system. The first one is the cache directory in your home directory. So every user home directory has a .cache directory, which is a hidden directory. And with time, it builds up a lot of files in there and it takes considerably much space. Now to check this, we have two approaches. We can use the command line or we can use also a graphical interface. Now I'm gonna show you this on the command line, but the program actually that you can install in your system, which I use from time to time, it's called Blitchbit and I can show it to you right here. And what you can do here, you can basically scroll through what's in here. So for example, if you're going to look at the cache in our system, for example, this one right here, and click preview, it's gonna calculate basically what's in there and it's gonna tell you how much space this directory is taking up. So it's taking quite a lot of space, as you can see, so five gigabytes. Now, if I would click clean, it will basically clean up this directory. And you can do the same for other directories here in the list. You can download Blitchbit from the main repositories if you'd like to do so. Now let me close this window because I want to do it actually from the command line. Now to find out actually how much space the cache directory is taking, we can use the du command or the disk usage command. And to do this, we can type in as a normal user du and then dash sh. So the S switch stands for summarize and the H switch stands for human readable. So we are asking basically to show us information in a summarized version in human readable form. And then we need to define basically the directory we want to show. In my case, it's the dot cache directory. And then we can hit enter. So you can see it's telling me it's about five gigabytes. So it's quite a lot of files in there and I actually don't need them. So I can safely remove them. So to do this, we can type in RM for remove and then dash RF. So we are basically forcing the removal and then the directory. So dot cache and then make sure there is a slash and then type in the asterisks. So basically you are telling that you want to delete everything inside the cache directory and not the directory itself. Then we can hit enter and then we can run again the du command and let's see what comes out now. And you can see it's now four kilobytes. So we emptied our cache in our home directory. Now, another directory that you might want to check from time to time is the .config directory in our home directory. So we can do the same. Let's type in du-sh and then .config and hit enter. So I have around 655 megabytes in there, which is not too bad. So this time I will leave it in there. But if you have a lot of files in there and the size is quite considerable, you might want to go in this directory and delete what's necessary. In this directory are configuration files for different programs. So make sure that you delete only what you don't need. And you can do this actually also from a file manager. If you open the file manager, whether it's in KDE or GNOME or any other desktop environment, just activate the hidden file and you will see the directory in there. Just go in there and delete just what you don't need anymore. Important is anyway to have a backup just in case something goes wrong. Now, another directory which we'll have to check from time to time is the journal directory. So the journal directory contains logs that can be useful if you need to troubleshoot your machine. But if you don't clean them up regularly, this directory will build up in time and it will also take considerably much amount of space. So let's check how much space is taking right now in my system by pulling up here the last command with the up arrow and going to slash var slash log slash journal and hit enter. So you can see it's taking up right now 4.1 gigabytes. It's quite a lot. I haven't cleaned this actually in a couple of months. So it's time to actually give it a go. So to do this, we can use actually the journal CTL command, which will give us several options for managing this directory. So let me clean up the terminal and type in here man journal CTL and hit enter. So there is an option here that we can check in this journal CTL man page, which is the vacuum option. So we can search it by hitting the forward slash here and typing in vacuum and a dash and hit enter. And you can see here we have the options. So we have three options available, dash dash vacuum size and dash dash vacuum time and also dash dash vacuum files. You can basically say vacuum size. So you can say keep only files that are equal or smaller than the size that you define or vacuum time, keep log files that are only from a certain amount of time and earlier. 
So it's really up to you how you want to do this. So let's quit out from here by hitting Q and let's run this command by typing in sudo journal ctl and in my case I'm going to use the time variation of this command. So I'm going to type in dash dash vacuum dash time equal I'm going to put in here two weeks and then I can hit enter. Enter my sudo password and hit enter and the journal has been deleted and it has only logs file now from the last two weeks. So if you pull up again the last command where we check the size of the journal, you can see right now it's 537 megabytes down for the four some gigabytes it was before. So you can run from time to time also this command just to keep the log files not too big. There are also some programs that will help you visualize where directories are taking space. And I showed you this already when I did the video about my PC. There is a program called FileLite if you're using KDE, which is going to show you exactly which directories are taking up a lot of space. And there are also several for GNOME. One of them is the GNOME Disk Usage Analyzer that should actually be coming already installed when you install GNOME. So use that also to check which directories also are taking a lot of space in your system. Now, the last thing that I would like to show you is, of course, the mirror list in our system. It's important to keep the mirror list also fresh so that we have also the best servers when we download our packages. Now, if you installed Arch Linux following the tutorials I have on the channel, Reflector should be already installed in your system. So to use it, we can always type in sudo reflector dash c and then the country where you are in right now in my case it's switzerland and i have already the commands there so i'm just gonna have to complete it and explain you what it does so the country here it's in my case switzerland if you have a country with two words like united states you need to put them into single quotes dash a is the age of the server in my case i'm gonna check for servers which have been updated since six hours. We're gonna sort the servers by rate, so speed, and to save the information in the mirror list in our system. And then you can hit enter. And there you go, we have now the newest mirror list available to us. So these are all the tasks I perform on my system regularly. I check for updates once every two or three days. I clean the package cache every 10 to 15 days. I check also for orphans and unwanted dependencies also every 15 days and also check the cache directory and the config directory more or less every three weeks and I'll check the journal normally once a month and so also for the mirror list. So as I said at the beginning of the video, go ahead and check the Arch Linux wiki for system maintenance and also for Pac-Man tips and tricks to which of course I will leave the link in the video description below. Read through them and find out which is the best routine for your maintenance of the system. Every machine is different, every user has different packages installed and a different use case scenario and your maintenance routine might be different than mine. By any means, please comment in the comments below how you maintain your Arch Linux installation and if I miss something or there is something that you would like to add, just post it in the comments below and share with the community which is always very important. So there you go guys, this is how I maintain my Arch Linux installation. There are not many tasks that I perform, but I do perform them regularly and this way my system is always running smoothly. So as I said in the video, go ahead and explore the Arch Wiki for both the system maintenance and also Pac-Man and find out what's the best routine for you. As you are installing also different packages than me, you might also require another routine for system maintenance. I hope you liked this video guys, if you did please hit the thumbs up and subs to the channel if you haven't already, subs always helps us out. And if you want to support the channel you can do so by visiting our Patreon website or you can donate via PayPal through our website as well. Thank you so much for watching this video guys and I'll see you very soon in the next one.